All right, welcome to uh, your very first flip class video. Uh, this first lesson is on factors and divisibility. Um, just a reminder that while you're watching these videos, you should have these notes right in front of you and uh, you should be copying uh, them down or filling them out as we go along. Uh, first thing we do is make sure we write our name and then please write today's date right there. Okay, so we're looking at uh, factors. Uh, you guys have seen factors uh, for a couple of years now, and just a reminder that all numbers have factors, uh, which are numbers that you can multiply together to make them up. So whole numbers can either be prime numbers or something called composite numbers. Now, uh, prime numbers are numbers that have only two factors. So an example of a prime number here would be seven. So it asks us, uh, find the factors of seven. Well, uh, we've got one and seven because one times seven equals seven. And that's really the only way we can make a seven by multiplying whole numbers together. By comparison, uh, composite numbers, an example of that would be the number 12. And 12 is a uh, composite number because it has the factors 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So, for example, 1 times 12 equals 12, 2 times 6 equals 12, and 3 times 4 equals 12. So because we've got some option other than 1 and the number, it's a composite. Okay, so our strategy for finding factors is pretty straightforward. Um, basically, we're going to check to see if a number, uh, check the number to see if it's a factor by trying to divide it into the larger number. So to find out if, an, if a smaller number is a factor of a larger number, we try and divide it in. Uh, we can just go sequentially through the numbers, start with one, two, three, work our way up. Uh, and one little hint there is once we find um, that one of the numbers is a factor, we want to turn around and find its complementary factor. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Okay, so uh, this question here is asking us to find the factors of 48. So um, the first thing is that we know one is always a factor of a number and the number itself. So I'm going to start a list here of my factors. Just keep it off to the side. So I know automatically that one is a factor. And I also know that 48 is a factor. I'm just going to space them out like this. and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, one and 48 are what we call complementary factors. So one times 48 gives us 48. Okay, um, now I'm going to start working my way through other numbers and seeing what I can uh, find and see if I can find some other factors. So I'm going to uh, try 2, for example. So to find out if 2 is a factor of 48, I'm just going to try and divide 48 by 2 and see what happens. So 2 goes into 4, uh, let's see, 2 times, which gives me 4, and that cancels out. I bring down, bring down the 8 here, and I say, see that 2 goes into 8 4 times, and again, there's, uh, that cancels out, so there's no remainder. So 2 is a factor of 48, and I'm going to include it in my list right here. But before I move on, what I need to recognize is that if 2 is a factor of 48, then so is 24. And it must be the complementary factor. 48 divided by 2 is 24, which means 2 and 24 are both factors. And if I put 2 at this end here, I'm going to put 24 all the way down at this end right here. Because I know that 2 and 48 are complementary factors. I'm going to separate them. And what we're going to see here is that I'm going to work uh, my way along here and find more factors. And eventually, this, this gap here is going to close in. And when it closes in right in the middle, I can be pretty confident that I've found all of my possible factors. Okay, so the next possible uh, number to try is 3. So we'll divide 3 into 48 and see what happens. 3 goes into 4 one time, which gives me 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. Bring down the 8 to make 18. 3 goes into 18 six times, and there is no remainder. So 3 is a factor, and so is 16. So I'm going to include 3 on my list here. And I'm going to include 16 on my list down here. All right, keep moving on. Uh, I'm going to try 4. 4 goes into 4 one time with no remainder. Bring down the 8. And 4 goes into 8 two times with no remainder. So 4 is also a factor. And so is 12.
All right, next is five. Let's see if five goes into 48. Uh, now five doesn't go into four, uh, but I know that five goes into 48 uh, nine times. It can be 45. And 48 minus 45 is three. So I do have a remainder here. And if I have a remainder, then that means five is not a factor of 48. All right, I'll keep going, try six. So again, six doesn't go into four, but I happen to know that six goes into 48 eight times to give me 48 with no remainder. So six is a factor, and so is eight. Now, um, when we're at this point right here, what we realize is that really there's only one other possible number that could fit in this gap here, uh, and that would be seven. And since there's only one number, then it would have to be seven times itself. Seven times itself is 49. So I know seven doesn't go uh, into 48. And so I know that I am done. This is my complete list. This is all of the possible factors. And it's handy because I, when I found each individual factor. I just made sure to find the complementary factor that went with that. And it kind of cut my work in half a little bit there. Okay, that's it for the first lesson. Don't forget to go to my website and fill out recap number one. And then you're all done.